welcome students so in my previous lecture or till the previous last part of discussion we were talking about the uh, ratio analysis or analyzing the financial statements with the help of ratios and uh, so far we have uh, discussed five ratios about this grasim industries limited uh, which was current ratio quick ratio super quick ratio and uh, uh, then the turnover ratios, two turnover ratios that is debtors turnover ratio and the creditors turnover ratio uh, means the debtors collection period and the creditors payment period and uh, uh, in these five ratios we have seen that the liquidity position of this firm is very good, it is excellent and uh, they are doing very well, they are keeping a optimum amount of the liquidity and uh, when we looked at the uh, current ratio we found it that it is well within the say acceptable range it means uh, uh, rather less than the uh, standard rule of thumb of 1.33 is to 1 and uh, uh, the company is managing this liquidity by having such a low uh, current ratio where the cost will be uh, very much under control. Uh, second uh, ratio we, uh, we looked at is that is the uh, cook ratio and cook ratio was yes according to the standard rule of thumb that is 1 is to 1 and when we try to know about the cash ratio that was just 8 percent. So, company is keeping 8 percent cash uh, uh, maybe uh, if you talk about the total uh, current liabilities. So, they are keeping only 8 percent cash. So, it means it is a, it's a wonderful uh, liquidity position they are maintaining not less not more level of the liquidity and uh, in that case you can make out you can understand that the firm will never default and will never be technically insolvent. When we use the term technical insolvency, when we use the term technical insolvency, technical, technical insolvency, technical insolvency means that when any short term liability or any liability becomes due to be paid to the source from where the funds have been arranged and the firm is not able to pay it. Maybe the firm is not insolvent, firm is having a good position if you look at its asset liability position then they are enjoying a good position it is a profit making firm also but the firm is not having sufficient liquidity. Profits are there but the profits are not in the form of cash. So, when there is a lack of liquidity when the, there, is a, there, there, there is a shortage of the cash with the firm it means firm is not able to make the payment on the due date. So, how strengthful you are, but if you are not able to make the payment of your creditors on the due date, it means that uh, means the strength is of no use. So, it means that st situation when the firm though it is solvent, it is having a good financial power, financial strength, but its liquidity is lacking or it does not have the sufficient liquid funds. In that case, that is called as the situation of the technical insolvency that firm is not able to pay for its obligations, pay for its liabilities on the due date on the time. So, there is a technical ins insolvency, but we have seen that in case of Grasim industries uh, their short term debt they have taken entirely that is in the form of the working capital limit WCM CL or the you can call it as the working capital line or you CC call it as a working capital line or the CC limit. So, in the form of CC limit entire short term debt is in the form of the CC limit and CC limit is not considered as a debt kind of we keep on receiving means we, we withdraw the money as and when we need the funds and we deposit it back when we have the surplus funds. So, uh, it is on the daily basis you can say. So, technical insolvency uh, is not expected in the form like aggressive industries because it has a very optimum amount of the liquidity because the, I am using the term optimum optimum amount of the liquidity optimum means when you do not have the more liquidity you do not have the less liquidity. If you have more liquidity means level of the current assets that is the inventory that is the debtors then it is the say cash and then it is a prepaid expenses or you call it as marketable securities you have a very high level of the uh, current assets. So, sometimes the current ratio is to 2 is to 1 or sometime, sometime even it is more than 2 is to 1. So, when the firm has a very high current ratio in that situation is considered as a over capitalized firm as far as the working capital is concerned as far as the short term funds situation is concerned and I, I tell you that if we keep the high amount of the current assets I discuss with you that keeping high amount of the current assets increases the financial cost. 
and when the financial cost is going up your profits are getting affected and when you reduce this level of the current assets investment in the current assets to the optimum level means I do not say that you bring it to the minimum level if you bring it down to the minimum level in that situation what will happen the firm will be technically insolvent because you do not have the sufficient cash here sufficient liquidity to, to pay for the liabilities on this side. So, it should not be neither too low or too high it should be in between that is a optimum amount that how much amount of the capital is required to be maintained the firm is maintaining that amount and it is not keeping very high and whatever only thing is that in the short term funds what happens that whatever the saving you do here by investing less in the current assets or optimum in the current assets whatever the savings we make here those all savings directly result into the increased profitability they directly result into the increased profitability because time period is very short it is in a few days or months maximum it is months you keep the inventory for a few months you keep the debtors for only few months you keep the cash on daily basis. So, if you save any any cost on account of these current assets they, there is no leakage of this savings there is no leakage there is no pilferage of these savings these savings can be transfer to the profits and profitability of the firm increases. So, those firms who are keeping the optimum amount of the working capital in that case what is happening that they are not going to be technically insolvent and second thing is they are not going to increase their financial cost. So, because they are maintaining the level of the current assets which is actually required in the firm. So, profit is also protected and the technical insolvency is also avoided. So, we have seen in the 5 ratios, ratios so far that the current ratio, quick ratio, super quick ratio and then debtors collection period DCP. When we calculated saw the DCP the form we found that the debtor collection period in this form is about in this form is about 20 days which is very very you can call it as low uh, period it means that talks about the strength of the firm's products demand for the firm's products market for the firm's product who gives the less credit in the market whose product is easily saleable in the market and when the product is easily saleable in the market either you tend to sell that on cash and if any, anyhow if you have to require the credit required to give the credit period also that credit period is minimum or you can call it as as low as possible. But when we compared it with the credit payment period CPP credit payment period was very high 180 days it means this you look at that they are getting the credit for 6 months whereas they are giving the credit for a period of less than even 1 month. So, this is the strength of the firm this is the liquidity position of the firm firm is maintaining sufficient amount of the liquidity neither they are investing investing too much in the inventory nor in the debtors nor in cash no prepaid expenses and marketable securities are also not there. So, it means very norm, normal level very optimum level of the current assets they are keeping. Now, uh, we will calculate the next ratio that is the last ratio in the liquidity ratios and that last ratio is the inventory turnover ratio. Let us see that how far that means for how many days the inventory is staying in the form and how in how many days that inventory is convertible into cash in how many days the inventory is convertible into cash that is inventory turnover ITR inventory turnover ratio ITR inventory turnover ratio or the ICP inventory conversion period. So, when you calculate the inventory turnover ratio I discussed when we were talking about the say formulas and the basis of calculating these different liquidity ratios I discussed with you that the inventory turnover ratio has to be calculated like this sales divided by the inventory or closing inventory you can see or maybe the average inventory. So, sometimes you can take the average inventory or sometimes it can be taken as a closing inventory. But when we talk about the numerator it is better to take this as the cost of goods sold COGS. If you take the cost of goods sold it is better because though the cost of goods sold is not directly given in the profit and loss account we will have to calculate their cost of goods sold but we can calculate it and divide it by even closing inventory. So, maybe the closing inventory or the average inventory whatever it is it is not going to make a big difference much difference but the it has to be calculated like this and for this uh, for calculating the inventory conversion period again we have to use this term period 365 divided by the inventory turnover 
ratio. 365 divided by the inventory turnover ratio is going to us the inventory conversion period and uh, we, we are going to find out that for how many days the firm is keeping the inventory as inventory and in how many days the inventory is converted into cash. So, we will use this formula for calculating the inventory turnover ratio that is cost of goods sold divided by the closing inventory and for the aggressive industries if you look at the uh, uh, say uh, cost of goods sold it is not given to us. So, we will have to calculate the cost of goods sold closing inventories I think it is given to us. If you look at the closing inventory that is given to us and that inventory figure is this is the inventory figure that is 8 to 4.14 is the closing inventory for this year 2006 and 7 and 750.73 is the it is in crores for the year 2006, but the cost of goods sold is not there. Let us see whether the cost of goods sold is given to us, no it is not given. We are given the material cost, we are given the manufacturing expenses, we are given the purchase of finished products and we have to take one more item into account that is the decrease in the of the stock in trade that is decrease in the stocks. So, uh, to calculate the cost of goods sold we all know that we need the material that is the raw material. So, we have to take the cost of raw material this is the raw material consumed. So, let us calculate the COGS. COGS can be calculated by that what we have to take here first of all we have to take the raw material. Raw material consumed is the cost of goods sold and raw material consumed is uh, 2219 in the year 2006 and 7 uh, 0.32 0.32 and then you have to take the manufacturing expenses. So, if you take the manufacturing expenses how much is the manufacturing expenses? Manufacturing expenses are 1744.33 1744.33 and then we take the third item that is uh, purchase of finished goods purchase of finished goods directly finished goods and purchase of finished goods means 321.321.16 and then decrease in stock if you take it has come down to 16.44. So, uh, there is a decrease in the stock by 16.44. So, if you take these items this works out as how much this will be uh, 10, 13 and 5. And then it is uh, 1, 4, 7, 8, 12, 1 and then it is 10, 14, 15 and then it is 16. So, it is uh, going to be uh, 9, 4, 21 and 6. So, it is going to be how much that is 6, 7, uh, uh, 7 and 4, 11, 12, 1, 10, 14, 15 and 6, 21. So, it is going to be like this. So, finally, the total cost of goods sold is going to be 4301.25. So, cost of goods sold is this much, inventory is directly given to us. So, 4301.25, cost of goods sold is 4301.25 and divided by the closing inventory. If you take, take the closing inventory, we have already seen the figure of the closing inventory is that is 824.14, 8 to 4, 8 to 4 8 to 4.14 this is the closing inventory figure and uh, in this case for calculating this you take the reverse of it. So, it is 8 to 4.14 divided by the 4301.25 so and multiplied by 365. So, this ratio works out as 70 days, 70 days is for the year 2006 and 7 and 74 days for the year 2005, 2005 and 6. So, we have calculated the inventory turnover ratio inventory conversion period actually and when you find the inventory conversion period it is 70 and 74 days is roughly in the range of 70 days. So, uh, we can understand it also because this firm is into the textile industry and textile is basically dependent upon the agriculture material cotton and then it has a long process means that process is very long. So, buying the raw material and then converting that into the finished product or if you talk even that the say selling the finished product in the market it is a textile product and you have to keep a sufficient stock of the textile. So, that there is no out of stock situation and you can convert that closing stock. Then if you talk about the material raw material it is because of the long press 
process it is requiring because it is uh, say bleaching, dyeing, misconverting their cotton into yarn, then bleaching, dyeing and so many other things have to be done. So, it is going to take a long time. So, conversion of raw material into finished product is uh, taking much time and then converting the finished product into sales is also taking some time. So, it is about 70 days which is not a big time they have to keep the inventory for 70 days around 70 days last year it was 74 days but in 2006 and 7 it has come down to 70 days. So, you can say it is in the range of about 70 days little more than 2 months which may be optimum better estimates will be whether it is high or low will depend upon if you compare the ratios of the other firms in the textile industry or you compare it with the industry average then we would be able to. But if you look at the other indicators like current ratio, quick ratio, super quick ratio or the debtors turnover and the creditors payment in that case we can easily make out that uh, this period does not seem to be much longer this seems to be the optimum period because in one ratio the company cannot be uh, left behind they must be having it and less than this or more than this is not advisable. So, they are keeping the inventory for 70 days. So, this is overall liquidity analysis of the firm. If you look at the overall liquidity position of the firm, we can easily understand that all the 6 ratios, 3 ratios based upon the current assets and current liabilities and 3 ratios based upon the turnover of the debtors, creditors and your uh, inventory. Even the turnover position is also very good, it is excellent, it is wonderful and the firm is maintaining a very good amount, very optimum amount of liquidity and it is is a wonderful organization, it is a wonderful firm, they are maintaining a very good financial position, very good liquidity position and it is reflected into their overall financial position in the balance sheet, in the profit and loss account and overall results if you look at they are really good, they are wonderful. After this, we will be talking about the next set of ratios and we have seen there now uh, whatever we discussed as the theoretical composition uh, so far, we discussed the 3 sets of ratios and in those 3 sets of ratios we talked about the different components and in those different components we uh, first we talked about the uh, ROI ratios, then we talked about the solvency ratios and then we talked about the say uh, liquidity ratios. So, these 3 ratios we have discussed so far and we try to understand these 3 ratios with the help of a case of Gracium Industries and when we calculated the return on investment of uh, Gracium Industries or when we try to understand the solvency of the Gracium Industries in that case we found that the Gracium Industries maintaining a very good having a very good return on investment. Similarly, the Gracium Industries having uh, very good solvency and the Gracium Industries having the very good liquidity. Next set of the ratios is called as the turnover ratios. Next set of the ratios is called as the uh, resource efficiency or the turnover ratios, turnover ratios. Uh, when you calculate these ratios, these ratios again can be seen that when you talk about the resources, first we have the financial resources. First we have the financial resources and these resources are like uh, your the liability side of balance sheet. There we are talking about the capital that is the equity and preference capital, we are talking about the reserve and surplus, we are talking about the uh, say uh, then the external sources. But first we are more concerned about is that is about the internal funds or the net worth the firm has and then you can see the efficiency of the asset side that the turnover of the uh, ratios uh, can be calculated with the help of the asset side. So, we will calculate compare the turnover of the firm or the efficiency resource efficiency means turnover means or the resource efficiency means with what efficiency the firm is using its existing resources with what efficiency the firm is using its existing resources and resources if you look it at you can look it at the resources from both the sides. First is from the liability side of balance sheet and if you look at the liability side of balance sheet you call it as the net worth that whatever the internal funds because external funds we borrow from the market whenever we have the need. But initially we invest the funds from our own resources and if we are investing the funds from our own resources we will have to compare that whatever the internal funds the fund firm has with what efficiency these funds are being used. So, that will be called as the net worth and net worth turnover ratio we will be calculating that with what efficiency the net worth of the firm is being used. 
second on the asset side of balance sheet if you talk about then we will be trying to know about the uh, say uh, fixed assets turnover ratio network turnover ratio and the fixed assets turnover ratio that whatever the fixed assets land plant building machinery the firm has created how efficiently the firm is using these fixed assets how efficiently the firm is using these fixed assets that is very very important so here two important ratios that is the fixed asset turnover ratio and the net worth turnover ratio and then we will be talking about the other two ratios also that is the debtors turnover ratio debtors turnover ratio and the inventory turnover ratio when we talk about the turnover ratios we include these four ratios into the resource efficiency or in the turnover category and here we have fixed asset turnover ratio net worth turnover ratio debtors turnover ratio and inventory turnover ratio so it means how efficiently the firm is using its net worth how efficiently the firm is using its fixed assets how quickly the firm is converting the sundry debtors means uh, into sales or miss sundry debtors into cash or collecting the sundry debtors and how uh, quickly the firm is converting the inventory into cash or they are selling the inventory into the market so these are the four important ratios first ratio is the fixed asset turnover ratio first ratio is the fixed assets turnover ratio and if you talk about the fixed assets turnover ratio it can be calculated we'll learn how to calculate the fixed assets turnover ratio and for this we compare the fixed assets with the sales the ratio is calculated here like sales that is you can call it as minus excise duty sales minus x means their net of excise duty so sales minus excise duty divided by the uh, net block net block of fixed assets net block of the fixed assets sales minus excise duty divided by the net block of fixed assets with the help of this formula we can find out that finally uh, what is the level of sales how many times the ratio says how many times the sales are of your total fixed assets net fixed assets means that is the total fixed assets minus depreciation we'll have to take the net fixed assets so how many times the sales are of the net fixed assets this ratio is going to tell us how efficiently we are using our fixed assets so that the sales are maximum and we are getting the maximum return from these fixed assets then we talk about the net worth turnover ratio and when you calculate the net worth turnover ratio here you say that ratio will be sales against sales that is again the net sales after excise duty has to be divided by the net worth sales have to be divided by the net worth so how many times the sales are of the net worth how many times the sales are of the net worth we are going to discuss here we are going to talk here about that and this is again a very very important ratio sales means the net of excise duty divided by the net block of the fixed assets we are going to take here and that's going to tell us that times this ratio has to be calculated in times not in percentage in times terms we are going to calculate this ratio and we will be talking about this ratio with reference to the data available from the grasm industries other two ratios that is the debtors turnover ratio dtr and inventory turnover ratio we have already talked about so we have seen that what is the debtors efficiency conversion efficiency and what is the inventory turnover efficiency of the firm we have seen and we will be calculating two ratios here and that is the fixed assets turnover ratio and the net worth turnover ratio for the grasm industries and then we would see that how efficiently the grasm industries is converting its say uh, fixed asset or they are using the fixed assets for maximization of their sales value so if you calculate these ratios you will be able to find out the efficiency with which these fixed assets are being used by the firm so uh, let's now talk about the and let's try to find out the fixed assets with the firm and what is the level of the fixed assets here if you talk about the balance sheet we look at the balance sheet here and the fixed assets are that is uh, gross block of fixed assets is 
and then it's a depreciation that is 3380.53 and then the net block is 3390.44 is the net block of the fixed assets. So now if we take the fixed assets that is the 3390 we will be taking for the year that is 2006 and 7. So what is the amount of sales? If you look at the sales it is 9607.97 we have the excise duty 1004.38 uh, and then net sales are 8603.59 this is the net sales. So let us take this figure of uh, 8603 divided by 8603.959 divided by the uh, net block of fixed assets and how many fixed assets we have? we have seen that fixed assets we have is that is uh, 3390.44, 3390.44. So this is the uh, uh, level of the fixed assets and the sales amount and if you calculate this ratio, this ratio works out as uh, how much it is 2.54 times. This ratio is 2.54 times. It means in the year 2006 and 7, the fixed assets and sales as compared to fixed assets were sales were 2. Point, uh, say two and a half times of the fixed assets investment in the fixed asset. It is very good. It is wonderful. You see, when you talk about the textile industry, one uh, peculiar characteristic of the textile industry is that it is a capital intensive industry. It is not labor intensive industry, it is a capital intensive industry that you have to make the huge investment in the capital uh, if you want to establish the capital say textile unit and there you have to have huge amount of land because we need the uh, say uh, more buildings. So big land, big buildings, large amount of buildings, machinery is also very typical and because we have to look at the cost part, cost of the textile product should be as low as possible because of the stiff competition. So you have to have the excellent machinery, latest machinery, latest technology. So your investment in the fixed assets is very high. So we can't say here that if the ratio is coming out as 2.54 times, uh, it is not a big ratio, it is not a big amount of the sales they are making as compared to the investment in the fixed assets because investment in the fixed assets is itself is very high amount. They are having a huge amount of investment in the fixed assets that is 3000 crores of the fixed assets they have. And when there is a high amount of the investment in the fixed assets and they are having the sales that is uh, say 2.2 uh, two and a half times of the two and a half times of the of the assets means first the denominator is very heavy and still your numerator is two and a half times of that. So you can't say that the sales is not very good. It's very good amount of the sales. Had the level been level of the uh, fixed assets been low, you would have seen then this level of the sales would have been sometime five or six times. So, so investment in the fixed assets being very high and even after that the firm is having high amount of the sales that is two and a half times of the investment in fixed assets is quite a good success and it's a very good performance and we have seen it is reflecting in terms of profitability, financial position and everything. And, and the, the ratio for the previous year is, let us check the ratio for the previous year and that is 2.21 times. That is 2.21 times. This ratio is 2.21 times. It means they are on the growth path. They had ratio that is 2.21 times and now the second ratio is that is the 2.54 times. So they are on the growth path. They are improving, they are growing and they are means wonderfully uh, improving their position over the years. Then we talk about the second ratio and the second ratio here is the net worth turnover ratio. So if you look at the net worth turnover ratio, net worth turnover ratio. So in this case, we will be calculating the again sales and sales amount is the same that is 8603.59 and then we have the uh, how much is the uh, net worth with us that um, net worth we have calculated already and this amount is that is 6230.04. So this, this is a total of the paid of capital and the uh, free reserves. And if you take this net worth which we have already used in the return on investment ratios, return on net worth, we have taken the same net worth figure here. So if you calculate the ratio here, so the ratio for this works out as that is 1.38 times. And if you look at the ratio for the previous year, this is 1.34 times. 1.34 times. 
So, uh, again uh, in case of the net worth also because now the denominator is again very heavy, it is double of the fixed assets. So, net worth is very high, when you have the high amount of the net worth and when you talk about the fixed assets after depreciation they are left as this, but otherwise the fixed assets are double of whatever the amount we are showing here. So, depreciation is about 50 percent. So, net worth is again a very heavy that is 91.69 crores of the capital and remaining is the uh, 6100 plus crores is of the reserve and surplus. So, total amount is 6230 for the year 2006 and 7 and if you look at this ratio this works out as 1.38 times and uh, not, a, not a bad because denominator is very heavy and uh, even the previous year it was 1.34, it is on the growth path, growth path it has become 1.38 times. It means again the turnover of fixed assets and the net worth is really very, very good, it is wonderful and it is really um, uh, performing very well. Other two ratios that is DTR and then the ITR, inventory turnover ratio and then the debtors turnover ratio we have already discussed. We have already talked about the inventory turnover ratio and the debtors turnover ratio and if you see, if you recall then we have seen that the debtors turnover ratio is just say collection period is 20 days and the inventory is 70 days. So, in 20 days they are converting the credit sales into cash and in 70 days they are converting the inventory into cash. So, it means uh, inventory into sales and then into cash. So, it means it is not a big deal. The overall turnover and resource efficiency of the firm is really wonderful, is very good and the firm is performing exceedingly well and it is reflected from the financial uh, statements also, it is reflected from the ratios also, what we have calculated the ratios, 4 sets of the ratios so far. Remaining ratios or remaining different types of the ratios I will be talking to you in the, talking to you in the next part of discussion. Thank you.